take a second to consider all of the worst things in the universe. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Yep, did you think of it? That's right, it's the NVIDIA FX5200. So no wonder this has been sitting in its box for almost 20 years and has never ever been opened. That's right, the cellophane wrapper is still on there. So what happens when you unbox a 20 year old graphics card? Well, join me because it's GPU June and we're gonna find out. But what was it that made this graphics card one of the worst of all time? Well, let's take a trip down memory lane, back to a time when Concorde was making its final flight, the space shuttle disaster took place, the SARS virus began to spread around Asia, and I looked like this. So times were pretty bleak, and the release of FX5200 was no outlier from this terrible trend. In 2003, AMD, or more accurately, ATI as they were known at the time, had not yet been purchased by AMD, and were the GPU performance kings, with their Radeon 9000 Pro and Radeon 9600 Pro. The FX5200 was released at only a few dollars less than the competing Radeon solutions, which had significantly better gaming performance. Yet somehow, the FX5200 can be found littered across all sorts of auction websites, whereas the Radeon 9000 series is nowhere to be seen. Unfortunately for us, pre-builds of the time loved the FX5200, partially due to its cheaper price tag, but also because of its diverse features, including support for DirectX 9, which would have been a significant selling point for gamers of the era. Unfortunately though, official support does not necessarily mean that it runs well, and the FX5200 disappointed here. If you're not already aware, the FX5200 was at the bottom of the FX lineup, making it the 2003 equivalent of the GT710 or GT210. I think this was best summarised by Tech Report, who wrote, I have to question just how well the card will handle future DirectX 9 games and applications. After all, a slideshow filled with DirectX 9 eye candy is still just a slideshow. To give you a proper idea of how old this graphics card is, if it were a human, it'd be old enough to drink alcohol, drive a car, get married, gamble, or even fly a plane. And yet, for all of those years, this poor FX5200 sat stuck within its cold cardboard prison. So how about we get it opened and see what's inside? So, as you can see, the box this graphics card came in is very different to the style of graphics card box that we see today. In fact, let me go grab a modern graphics card box so we can compare the difference. This is a graphics card box for a modern GPU. Do you see the difference? In fact, the difference is so massive, you can't even fit the entire box of this RX 6800 in frame. But the bit we're all interested in is what's inside. So I've got my trusty iFixit screwdriver and we're gonna use this to break the cellophane. And you know, I've had this graphics card sat here for well over a year now, just waiting for an excuse to open it. And I haven't wanted to, because it's just, oh, the, the fact that it's still sealed and has never been used. Well, it's not surprising because it's a terrible graphics card, but at the same time, it's so, I don't know, could this become a collectible in years to come? Well, it's unlikely because it is so terrible, but the potential's there. In fact, actually, if we look at this barcode before we open it, we can see that this specific version was purchased on the 13th of November 2007, four years after this graphics card came out. But anyway, how about we get this box opened? So I think, what's the best way of doing this? Maybe let's go from up here. So if I... Here's the cellophane. And that's it. I guess that was the moment of truth. The cellophane's broken. It's a, it's now officially a used graphics card. But we need to continue forwards because I actually really want to see what the thermal paste on this graphics card looks like. It's been sat there for 20 years, never ever heating up or being used. Will it still be like factory or will it have just turned to dust by now? Oh, I've peeled the sticker off. I, I didn't mean to peel that off, but uh, I, I guess that's off now. You'd think that after years of aging, the colours might have faded, but it's surprisingly still very much as I'd imagine it would have been on the store shelf 20 years ago. There you go, that's it to chuck that to one side. 
here we go. A brand new, never before opened NVIDIA GeForce FX 5200 by Inno3D. I guess that leaves only one thing for it. It's time to open it up and see what's inside. Could you imagine if there was just no graphics card in here and it's just an empty box after all these years? Oh, I hate doing this because I always bend the cardboard so I can never get it out. Come on, out you come. You've been in your cage for too long. Let's see what's inside. It's, it, it's stuck. The graphics card is stuck in the box. Oh, here we go, here we go. Are you ready? Drum roll, please. <laughs> oh, wow. Would you look at that? That is... That is an ancient graphics card, and this is the first time it's ever seen the light of day. I mean, this thing has been in its box for the last 20 or so years. It's kind of crazy to think. Okay then, so what do we actually get in the box? Well, it looks like we've got some sort of adapter. It looks like it's a, oh, it's an S-Video to RCA adapter. What are the chances that anyone's going to be using one of those these days? So do we get any documentation? Oh, oh, yes we do. An installation kit. Ooh, a warranty disclaimer. Something tells me the warranty on this thing might have expired by now. Interesting. So we've got this little CD. Ah, driver installation CD. That makes sense. Okay, and it looks like on the other side we have a really basic hardware installation guide. Nothing overly fancy, but if you're a newbie, this is something that you might find useful. So that's nothing overly exciting. But what we care about is this right here, the graphics card. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that is the evidence right there. That is a fully intact seal, and that is proof that I am not lying about this graphics card. It really is completely unboxed for the last 20 years. I was gonna try and do it carefully, but that's not gonna happen now. Look at that, ruined, ruined. Okay, and here we go. Shall I flip it over? Wow. So you can see straight away why even when this graphics card was brand new, it was considered dull and boring. Okay, so let's have a look. Are all these capacitors okay? Is anything leaking? No, it all... Actually, hang on, no, what's this here, Matt? I'm no electrical engineering expert, but this just doesn't look right. I mean, maybe it's okay, but to me, this just doesn't seem right. Leave a comment down below if you know what's going on here. And in fact, that doesn't look right either, but regardless, it's brand new. So in theory, this should work perfectly out of the box. And you can see they've definitely got a fan connector here for the models which do include a fan. This model is obviously not one of them. Anyway, let's have a look at the back of the card. So we can see we've got our uh, DDR RAM chips there. So assuming this is a 256, yep, 256 megabyte model as confirmed by the sticker. So that would imply that these are 64 megabyte DDR RAM chips. Our rear IO is very boring. We've got DVI, S-Video out, VGA, nothing overly exciting going on at the back of the card here. But overall, I mean, I say surprisingly, but it's not surprising whatsoever. It's, you know, it's been locked away. It's in pretty good condition. I, I, there's no dust, no dirt, it's... This could be the best condition FX5200 in existence. It's usually at this point in the video that I'd say how about we plug the graphics card in and get it benchmarked. But that's been done a million and one times by everyone. And what hasn't been done a million and one times is taking a look at 20 year old thermal paste. So how about we take the heatsink off of this GPU and take a look at what 20 year old thermal paste looks like. Is it actually going to exist anymore? Is it just going to be dust? So if you've only ever worked on modern graphics cards, you might be surprised to find out how easy it is to disassemble an older graphics card. This one is incredibly easy. Do you see these two little white tabs? Well, that's all that's involved. If we flip over the graphics card, you'll notice that these two tabs here can be pinched in. You can use tweezers, pliers, or even your fingers, but that's all that's required to separate the heatsink from the PCB. So that's what we're going to do right now. And pinch. Once you've pinched in, you push. Pinch in again on the other side. And push again. There we go. Push through. Flip on over. 
you'll see that the springs have now released and you can lift away. And so we can see some thermal paste has definitely come away on our heatsink and there is definitely some still left over on the GPU die itself. But that right there, that ladies and gentlemen, is 20 year old thermal paste. And there's only one thing for it, it's a finger test. So, that's, that was surprisingly not, I was thinking that was going to be dusty or crumbly, but it was actually still surprisingly pasty. As you can see, there's smear marks on the GPU die there, and you can see it's also come off on my finger. I have actually, just to the side here, got a CPU so that we can compare a fresh application to this 20 year old application. So if I was to apply this to the CPU, there we go. But because I haven't got a CPU cooler to hand, I'm just going to smush it down with another CPU. So there we go, that's not exactly a very even application, but it gives you an idea. This is what a fresh application looks like, whereas this is what a 20 year old application looks like. Fresh, old, fresh, old. Can you, can you tell the difference? So what we can determine here is that it's not the age of the thermal paste that necessarily makes it go bad. It's more than likely the heat. Thermal paste is subdued to very high temperatures, often above 80 degrees Celsius, which can cause it to lose its pasty substance and sort of turn to a more brittle, crumbly mess. In this case, it's been sat in a box for 20 years and hasn't had a chance to do that. And so the thermal paste, whilst yes, not as good as it was when it first came out of the factory, is still reasonably paste-like. And so there you have it. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what 20 year old thermal paste looks like. And so if you guys did enjoy this video, then be sure to hit like and get subscribed down below because it really does let me know that you enjoy this style of content. But if your thoughts are more complicated than that, then make sure to leave a comment as well because that is always good and helps me to improve all my videos. If you haven't already noticed from the big old overlay up here, then this is GPU June, where myself and other creators are celebrating some older graphics cards which don't get as much love as they should. So if you want to check out more videos from other tech creators, then check out the playlist in the video description down below. But guys, I will see you next week. Enjoy and take care.